over the next few minutes, I want to do a deeper dive on where we're going over the next few years and what you can expect from us in terms of our technology roadmap and where we're investing some key resources uh, over the next several years. <clears throat> from the very beginning of our technology development program, we've been focused on building scalable performant quantum computing technologies and putting them in the hands of our customers as soon as they become available and taking the shortest path possible to commercial large-scale quantum computing systems. And this effort has rested on four technology pillars. The first is scale. As we're able to build larger scale processors with larger device count, larger numbers of qubits, and put those qubits at your fingertips, we can increase the performance of the fundamental technology and unlock a growing set of use cases and continue to open up a large gap between classical approaches and to solving these problems and the power of quantum annealing. The second is coherence. At the core, we're harnessing quantum coherence to deliver computational utility. Increasing coherence, and as we increase uh, the coherence in our processors and develop more coherent processors, we've been able to fundamentally link increased coherence to dramatically increased performance. Faster time to solution and the quantum supremacy in quantum simulation result that you heard Alan speak about this morning. The third pillar is connectivity. We've been growing the basic connectivity of our processors, and by this I mean how connected, how many devices is each qubit in the fabric of our processor connected to. As we scale the connectivity up, we're able to represent more complicated structures, more complicated lattices, and more complicated optimization problems. And finally, fundamentally control. The ability to programmatically control, uh, program these complicated optimization functions and new uh, protocols that allow for new use cases are fundamental to the technology development that we're doing. But we don't develop technology in a vacuum. We're always developing technology with the goal of increasing the set of use cases by which our customers can find value. Alan spoke about this roadmap uh, this morning. Uh, along the top is a roadmap for where we're taking our quantum annealing computing systems uh, over the next several years. We're currently right now focusing on Advantage 2, um, and really at the core of Advantage 2 are processors with increased connectivity and increased coherence. Advantage 2 performance update processors will support a growing set of novel annealing protocols to unlock new use cases and new capabilities within the fabric of our processors. Advantage 3, from the ground up, is going to support analog digital hybrid quantum computing. And this is incredibly exciting for us. And we're also going to continue to drive up coherence times and co the fundamental coherence of our processors. And then finally, Alan spoke this morning about sort of multi-chip processor integration. So rapid scaling to large-scale processors, even larger-scale processors, by building annealing processor die across uh, multiple, uh, multiple uh, annealing processor fabrics across multiple chips and multiple die. On the software side, the NL solver that we launched last year in the middle of 2024 has been a game changer. Alex spoke about sort of the, comp the, the comp complex problems that we can actually solve with the NL solver and increasingly the complex constraints that occur in, in any of these hard business problems. But the NL solver also gives us the means to rapidly add nodes, add symbols, add features to the solver to unlock use cases and drive a performance for customers. We're also focused in, in staying very close to the exciting and emerging use of our QPUs to enhance machine learning platforms. And we would like to make machine learning model training much more efficient, and that's a key goal for us on our roadmap. Moving forward, really targeting hybrid solvers to support an increasing set of, of, of both optimization and machine learning use cases. And then finally, uh, we have our site set on a framework for uh, really integrating machine learning and optimization to deliver end-to-end -end value in really, really hard optimization and uh, optimization business cases. And as we progress in this technology, we're expecting to be able to open up an increasing number of use cases uh, where customers are really getting quantum utility and getting quantum value out of our platforms. We spoke about Advantage 2. This is uh, an incredibly exciting technology, and I'll speak a little bit more about some of the benchmarking runs uh, that we've done on our Advantage 2 chips, comparing them to Advantage. And you'll hear a lot more uh, from my colleague, Pau, tomorrow, and he's going to do a deep dive on uh, some of the exciting performance benchmarks coming out of our Advantage 2 chips. At the core, we are also really driving up coherence times and producing more and more coherent technologies as we develop our, our quantum computing technology. 
And we do this with a three-way collaboration between material science, so finding fundamentally new materials or better quality materials uh, that lower the noise of the qubit C. It's a collaboration between material science and device design, so fundamentally coming up with the devices uh, that are more resilient to noise sources and fabrication. So all of these devices and these materials need to be integrated into a production fabrication stack to allow us to build out these large scale, more coherent devices. But as we've been really improving the, the fundamental coherence of our technology, this has led to incredible and driven some incredible performance benefits. So uh, a really landmark paper that we published in 2023, uh, so about a year and a half ago in Nature, uh, really showed a quantum scaling advantage in finding low energy solutions to hard optimization problems. So what we were able to show is that our system in the coherent regime and our processes are coherent enough to open up a gap, a scaling gap, uh, to some very canonical classical approaches for solving this problem. Fundamentally, we're harnessing coherence for better performance and optimization. More coherent processors in the coherent regime really unlock the ability to do the quantum supremacy calculations that we recently published in science. These represent a fundamental capability that's just beyond, is completely beyond the reach of even the most powerful classical computers that exist today. And finally, we've been looking at Advantage 2, benchmarking Advantage 2 and optimization, comparing it to Advantage, and we're seeing a gap open up, much better performance than Advantage 2 on delivering lower energy, higher quality solutions. And this isn't a marginal improvement of, say, 10% or 20% or even a factor of two. We're seeing orders of magnitude faster time to solution on some key benchmarking runs when we look at Advantage 2 over Advantage. And this has us incredibly excited and has really sort of solidified um, the, the choices that we made and what we're focusing on as we build up to this technology. <clears throat> We've also had incredible response to new features and new protocols that we make available on our technology. So a good example of this is the fast annealed protocol. So this is the protocol that allows our customers to access the coherent quantum annealing regime. We made the fast annealed protocol generally available on all of our QPU solvers uh, in April of 2024. And we've seen just an incredible demand from our customers. Steve spoke just a couple of minutes where in excess of 4 million customer jobs have been submitted that use this feature. And this has really highlighted the kind of the growing demand from our customer base for access to these new features that unlock performance and unlock new capabilities. We are particularly excited, Alice spoke a little bit this morning about the idea of enhancing commercial scale annealing processors with digital-like protocols. The ability to do targeted qubit excitations in the fabric of a large scale annealing processor and the ability to read out the qubit state on an arbitrary basis. These protocols are particularly exciting because we think they're gonna unlock new optimization capabilities, enhance performance in solving hard optimization problems. They will be able to allow us to increase the complexity and the richness of distributions that we can pull from the annealing hardware, which could really drive uh, better performance and increasing uh, performance for generative AI, and really expand and enhance the capabilities of our technology to do material simulation. As we develop these features, we're going to be making them available on Advantage 2, but Advantage 3 from the ground up is going to fundamentally support these exciting new capabilities. But one of the pillars I spoke about at the beginning um, to our technology development is scale, getting to larger scale processors. Like Alan spoke again about this morning, um, we have uh, an active R&D program, um, an aggressive R&D program to drive up the qubit counts in our technology. And there's sort of four pieces to this. Fundamentally, each individual chip that we're developing will increase in both connectivity and coherence. But we're also developing next generation digital addressing. So you can see the, the number of lines that go from room temperature into our cryogenic enclosure. Emil spoke about this is roughly 200 lines to control uh, the, a, a much larger number of on-chip digital circuits. We want to keep this I.O. footprint and the number of lines relatively fixed as we grow the qubit count and the device count by another order of magnitude. And this requires a next generation digital addressing that, that uh, we are developing. But in addition to that, we want to increase the scale of our, our processor technology by integrating annealing fabrics across multiple processor die. So we have the ability to, to rapidly scale to much larger processors. And fundamentally, this is going to require slightly larger cryogenic enclosures as the, 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 these multi-chip or multi-die processor fabrics start growing. 
but this has us incredibly excited and has, has sort of outlined a path by which we're going we're gonna to get to 100,000 qubit processors. Fundamentally, all of the cryogenic control, all of the, the scalable control, all of our experience with flux-based qubits, and all of the quantum systems technology that we have been developing that have supported five generations of annealing quantum computing system are also allowing us to develop our game model systems. Fundamentally, we're using flux gate qubits for our game model processors and the same scalable control uh, to allow us to be able to set up these flux-based qubits to uh, support gate operations. We're currently focusing on this local scalable cryogenic control of gate model qubits. Again, setting these qubits up to be able to run gate operations. With this established, we'll be able to perform high fidelity one and two gate operations, again, via the scalable control. We're not gonna brute force the I.O., but we want this scalability in from the beginning. This will allow us to start producing interacting logical qubits. These are qubits that have partial error correction, so multiple physical qubits <clears throat> that are operating in concert to form effective logical qubits that are interacting. And really, the goal is to, to produce a growing number of these logical qubits in the scalable architecture, and again, harnessing a lot of what we're developing for the multi-chip integration to support large-scale gate model systems. Our hybrid solvers in Leap are fundamental to unlocking uh, commercial value and optimization for our customers, really taking the best of classical and quantum resources to solve these hard problems Alex did a really nice deep dive on our NL solver. This is really allowing us to solve much harder business problems, more complicated business problems at a larger scale and a larger scale of both number of variables and complexity. And this is incredibly exciting um, for a few reasons, but fundamentally, this gives us a framework by which we can rapidly innovate and iterate and deliver new features and unlock new use cases. And so this, this technology path over the next several years has me incredibly excited, and you can expect a, a rapid pace of, of feature development to support a growing set of use cases with our NL solver. And finally, I want to touch on, again, something that Alan talked about this morning. We have a growing set of customers. Alex talked about Japan Tobacco, uh, Triumph, really exploring hybrid architectures for more efficient and performant machine learning models. We released uh, a package, uh, an open source uh, package in Ocean that allows us to integrate our quantum processing units and interface them with uh, a modern uh, production grade machine learning library, really allowing users to fundamentally build and train models like energy-based models, like restricted Boltzmann machine models uh, via QPU samples. You heard a little bit about the work we're, that we've done uh, uh, with Japan Tobacco. Again, this is really enhancing a uh, an architecture, a transformer-based architecture with QPU samples to potentially provide a richer set of samples and more novel uh, sort of drug candidates or drug-compatible uh, candidates. And we're also actively working on a hybrid diffusion architecture model internally with our research team at D-Wave. The idea here is, again, to enhance the, a diffusion model with QPU samples to essentially investigate whether we can shrink uh, the overall neural nets that, that, that form the core part of these, these very, very heavy duty models for potentially shorter training, lower training costs, lower inference costs. So this direction has us incredibly excited and we continue to invest heavily in exploring the use of, of our QPUs to really enhance and accelerate machine learning applications. And finally, going back to the roadmap, where we're really going over the next several years is that we see a lot of promise in an integrated framework or platform for machine learning and optimization and a growing set of exciting use cases that, that could make good use of a framework, that framework. I'll leave it there, um, but I just want to give you all a sense of what you can expect from us over the next several years. Um, it's been an incredibly exciting year, and it will continue to be an incredibly exciting few years. Thank you for your time.